Praise God. I want to thank Pastor for giving me the privilege to share the word. I do not take it lightly. Father, I am grateful. Amen. Revelation 16, 13 to 15. Hmm. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walks naked and they see his shame. Exodus 8, verse 1 to 4. We shall be reading this responsively. I mean, I will read verse 1, you read verse 2, I read verse 3, and then we all read verse 4. Amen? Amen. So I go first, you go 3. I go first, you go 2, I go 3, and we all read 4 together. So I go now. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Can we have NLT for by any chance or another version? But if you can't, that's okay. And the Lord spoke to Moses. When you have it up, just give me a wave. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Your turn, verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 3, I read, the Nile River will swarm with frogs. They will come up out of the river into your palace, even into your bedroom and onto your bed. They will enter the houses of your officials and your people. They will even jump into your ovens and your kneading bowls. Verse 4, everyone, frogs will jump on you, your people, and your officials. Somebody say, God forbid. Sounds like Disney movie, right? Like what you would see in that um, princess with the frog. The frog is um, the prince, and then the moment she kisses the frog, changes to one prince charming, blah, blah, blah. That's the only movie kind of that I think I have seen where a frog is, turns to something nice. Maybe there's another movie that I, I don't know. Anyway, I'll tell you the genesis of this. So one day, I was just, I had prayed, and I was just sitting down, kind of meditating. Usually I would have my blanket covering my head. I, would, I, would just, I just want to have that space like I'm by myself. I was on the couch sitting. And then after staying there for a while, the Lord said to me, pray against the spirit of frog. And I'm like, what? Frog? What's that? Where is that coming from? And then I began to research. And from my research, after praying from that research, some things happened. And that's what the Lord said I should share today. Amen? Amen. Are you ready to hear? If you're ready to hear, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So this is not me speaking. This is God speaking. Because I don't usually like to go into this sort of areas because I like to protect. I could be selfish sometimes. I like to protect myself. Maybe Daddy Gio, Pastor Adeboye could share on things like this. But you know, we've got to obey the Lord. Shout hallelujah. So this is God's word. Somebody say, I take cover under the blood of Jesus against every attack of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Say that prayer in one minute. I take cover under the blood of Jesus against every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I stand on the ground of the blood of Jesus and I ask for mercy. Father, show me mercy. I repent of every wrong in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, by the blood of Jesus, I proclaim victory in the courts of heaven and on earth over every negativity assigned against... Are you praying? In the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, I stand and I proclaim victory in the courts of heaven and on earth over every negativity assigned against my life, assigned against my destiny, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give me in KJV Exodus chapter 8. Thank you. God bless you, media. So we see in that revelation... He says, some frogs came out. Okay, if we look at that revelation, leave it there for me. He says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out. Leave that KJV um, 
Revelation for me, please. Revelation 16, 13. Thank you. Revelation 16, 13. Okay, I'll use my phone. Hallelujah. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, when these spirits came out, number 14, thank you very much. They were spirits like frogs. So they were not actually frogs. 14, thank you. For they are spirits of devils working miracles. The type of miracles they work in believers' lives, if you're a believer, they begin to do some things that are uncomfortable, irritating, as we see as, uh, in this teaching today, when, as I go along. Which go forth unto the kings. You see, these spirits begin to attack the things that are meant to be kings to help you. People in high places, your friends, your relatives, your relationships, they begin to instigate people, institutions, communities, whatever, against you, against your person. He says, to go forth unto the kings of the earth and, to, and of the whole world to gather them to the great battle. So you begin to fight. Some battles you can't explain. Where, where is this thing coming from? Why am I going through this? Some things you can't explain. You don't understand. You think you, are the, you have done everything. They just remain. Spirit of frogs. Verse 15. Now there's a warning. I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments. You see, when we get into this zone, you need to be careful because you don't just pray and do this and say, go, they're going to go. But then the Bible says they will come back again and check if you are serious, if there's space for them to come back. And when they come back, the Bible says the demon will go back and take seven more powerful demons and bring and oppress that person. I pray for you. I pray for myself. That will not be us in the name of Jesus. So that's why we take cover under the blood of Jesus, one. And that's why we must live righteously. Do your best. Look at your neighbor. Say, do your best. Yeah. Try as much as possible not to live a life of sin. Intentionally. No. If you have heard the word, if you are a Christian, do everything you can to stay off his path. I mean the path of the enemy. Because the moment you accepted Jesus, you declared yourself an enemy of the devil. The moment you say, Jesus, I accept you, you said, Satan, I don't care what you do. Do your worst. I am for Jesus. Now, if you say that and then you're playing into the, his territory, you're putting yourself in danger. Somebody say, not anymore. Now, if you look at Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. Thank you, media. God bless you. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. It says here, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so that they can worship me. Now, some things that would happen in your life today is because so that you can serve God. Your money is going to be set loose today. Somebody is going to receive liberation today in the name of Jesus. And when that happens, it's not so that you can say, oh, now I have enough money to just globe trots, fly the world. It's not wrong to do that. First of all, it's so that you can serve God. Can I have an amen? amen. Verse 2. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across your entire land. Now, this was God plaguing Egypt because they refused to let the Israelites go. Now, if you look at the book of Revelation, the enemy decided to copy anything God does. Satan copies. Amen? Why do people do blood sacrifices? Why do they do light, lighting candles and all of those? They're all the things God asked the, his people to do. So he just copies. Somebody say, Satan copies. Yes, he does. He's always copying. So when God did this, he decided to copy as well. Now in verse 2, it says, If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across your entire land. Somebody say, God forbid. In the name of Jesus. Now this is where it begins. The Nile River will swarm with frogs. 
What does water represent? Anyone want to help me? Water, what does it represent? Holy Spirit, somebody says. It represents life. So when the enemy releases the spirit of frogs against you, affects your source of livelihood, affects the things that give you joy, the things that brings life to you, the things that when you see, you're like, oh my goodness, thank God. When the spirit of frog comes. But the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. Shout amen. amen. When there's an attack on the river of life, your source of life, source of joy, source of livelihood is attacked. Anything that gives you joy, the spirits go to organize battles against those things that gives you happiness. Your marriage your children, your finances, your job, your business, your relationships. People start talking for no reason. Things just come against you. Somebody getting sick here, another one getting sick there. You wrote an exam, you were supposed to score this. For some reasons, you got there, you just messed up. Attacks from everywhere. Somebody say, no more. Now you're going to say this prayer. In this service, we're going to pray a bit. Every attack on my source of livelihood... On my source of life, I bind you. Okay, before you do that prayer, can you just think of something that gives you joy? Or that has given you joy and you feel like something has come to take it away. Or something is about to take it away. Or it's sliding off from your hands. Just think about it. That's what we're talking about. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Every attack on my source of livelihood, on my source of life, my source of joy, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I remove you. I reverse your operations by fire in the name of Jesus. Say that prayer. If you want to stand, feel free to stand. If you want to sit or kneel, do whatever you want. But then make sure you're praying in the name of Jesus. Every attack on my source of livelihood, on my source of income, on my source of life, my joy, my growth, my happiness, I bind you in Jesus' name. I reverse and remove your operations from my life, from my family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Number two, Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians 2, 14. Can I have KJV? Thank you. If we look at that um, Exodus chapter 8, it says the, the frogs will come into the river and into your palace, into your bed chambers. Thank you, media. Blotting out the handwriting. Let's read together after two, one to go. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. He took them out of the way and nailing it to his cross. Shout hallelujah. Spirit of frogs, anything that brings the following. Number one, embarrassment. Somebody say embarrassment. Irritation. Awkward situations. Inconvenience. Things that are annoying. Now, this grammar, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it. Discommodious. I don't know if that's what it, how it's pronounced. But from this thing I see here discommodious, embarrassing, anything that makes you, it's not killing you, but it's not comfortable. It's not taking out your life, but you know this is not how my life should be. That is the spirit of the frog. Somebody shout, no more. Some people are sick for extended periods of time. They will not die, but the sickness remains. And the doctors say, this is not a terminal illness. We just have to manage it. That's the spirit of the frog. So I say anything annoying, embarrassing, irritating. Yeah, those are the spirit of frogs. They're going to pray. I declare judgment. You know how, do you see soldiers sit when they're fighting? Oh my goodness, let's stand. Thank you. I declare judgment. You see, you have power. Don't think you don't have power. Everyone that have accepted Jesus has power. Potential power. 
You know, in your car, you already have gas. Until you ignite the engine and press the accelerator, nothing happens. So you have power resident. Somebody say, I have power. Now you are going to put on the ignition and accelerate. That's what we're doing now. Amen. I declare judgment on every unclean spirit. Like the frog, in the name of Jesus, I remove your negative marks on my life, on my person, on my destiny, by the blood of Jesus. Say that prayer in the name of Jesus. I declare judgment on every unclean spirit like that of the frog, in the name of Jesus, in my family, in my children's lives, in my career, in my business, in my ministry, I declare judgment. I declare judgment on you, in the name of Jesus. I remove all your negative marks from my life, from my person, from my destiny, with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's see, thank you for praying. So when you get home, you may still want to pray. Take this prayer points down. Amen. Some people, you just see them, they're just irritating for no reason. That's the spirit. Sometimes you haven't done anything to anyone. They just don't like you for no reason. That's the spirit. The Bible says God will surround the righteous with favor. Round about us with a shield. Scripture says, if your ways pleases the Lord, he makes even your enemies to be at peace with you. That's our heritage. Amen. Somebody shout, no more. Number three. The Bible says the river brought forth abundantly frogs. It says, and the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly. We shall go up and come into your house. Into your house. And even to your bed chamber. Oh my goodness. Somebody shout, no more. Ya kalabasha. Number three, somebody shall no more. A lot of us are suffering under this impact. This, these things, very dangerous. You would not know it's going to lead to destruction, but it's just that you're like, it's okay, it's happening to everyone. Let's just adapt. Can you imagine frogs, do frogs kill? They don't kill. But, well, maybe some people have them as pets. I don't know. But they're very irritating. They could be. They, I think they are to me. Not comfortable. Would you? How would you feel sitting in your lounge with guests and then frogs start jumping all around? That's what happening, what's happening to some people. They're not physical. They're spiritual. So you start experiencing irritating things around you. Things not going well. You have planned. You know it's going to end this way. All of a sudden, something shifts. And just goes into shambles. Somebody shout, no more. The river brought forth up frogs abundantly. He says, into their beds. The bed is your resting place. When you cannot sleep, when anything disturbs or alters your rest, your relaxation, that's the spirit of the frog. Sleep Rest, relaxation is taken away when the spirit of the frog is at work. In your house, you will have all these experiences just like I said because the spirit of the frog is there. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Every inconvenience. Every inconvenience in power. Sorry. Operating in my bedchamber. In my bedroom, in my house, affecting my sleep, causing anxiety, depression, powers attacking me at night. I bind you, I cast you out now. In the name of Jesus, live my life now. Live my life now. Every inconvenient in power operating in my bedroom, in my bedchamber, in my house, 
affecting my sleep, causing anxiety, depression, powers attacking me at night. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I say no more. I stand on the ground of the blood of Jesus. I cast you out. Leave my house. Leave my home. Leave my children. Leave my bedroom. In the name of Jesus. Leave my destiny. Leave my husband. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Number four, we're going to seven. We'll, we'll soon finish. I'll make it very short. Let's sit down. Thank you. Take these prayer points down, please. And make sure you pray them when you get home. Number four. It says it will enter your bed. You know, the bedroom is like a space. Your bed if you are married, it enters your intimacy. Instead of enjoying sexual pleasure, where are the children? Are they out? Ashley, do you want to go over there? Thank you. Go to stay with the kids. Thank you very much. Instead of enjoying the pleasure, it comes in between. Something God made for pleasure becomes irritating for extended periods of time. Somebody shout, no more. Enters the black bed. When the marriage becomes inconvenient, disturbing, irritating, when it becomes awkward for no reason. I met somebody, I knew somebody a while back, and this person said, My wife has not done anything for me, but I don't want her anymore. Somebody says, Spirit of the frog. Yeah. No quarrel, nothing wrong, but he doesn't just want her anymore. <laughs> Somebody say no more. When the marriage is not over, but it's over. You get that? When couples start living like flatmates, that's the spirit of the frog. Today is Relationship Sunday. We are going to pray. It also affects me. Okay, we'll go to the sexual life later. Let's be on our feet. Whatever frog has entered my bedchamber to disturb my peace and the sanity of my marriage. Now, for those of you not yet married, you say this prayer for whoever you decide to marry. You know, you can pray in advance. Amen. For those that are married, yeah, you can pray it. Those that are separated, divorced, Hoping that God will restore their relationships. Yeah, you say the prayer. Amen. Amen. Whatever frog has entered my bedchamber to disturb the peace and sanity of my marriage, I bind you and I cast you out. Whatever spirit of the frog, any power of darkness that has entered my bedchamber to disturb the peace and sanity of my home, this peace and sanity of my marriage, I bind you and I cast you out. Live in the name of Jesus. Live in the name of Jesus. Live in the name of Jesus. Right now, live in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's see. Thank you. Number five. It says, enters the bed. Anything that affects your sexual life, the bed is synonymous. You see, when the Lord told me this, and then I began to understand these things, then I remembered for an extended period, for about a year or two, I would see a particular person in my dreams in our bed. Not once, not twice, not three times, not ten times. Somebody say, Spirit of the frog. The moment I prayed this prayer, things were restored in my marriage. That's why I was like, Lord, you want me to share this? No, I can't share it. But thank God he gave me. He said, go in this your might. Because I don't like trouble. Amen? But we are covered. Somebody say we are covered. Thank you, Jesus. Anything that has made your sexual life a disturbance is a frog spirit. Pornography. Lust. Sexual perversion. When as husband and wife, you're not being intimate as you're supposed to. When your imagination becomes a battleground for sex. 
Sex in the dream. As a married person, like I said, instead of having pleasure during sex, it becomes extended irritation. When it becomes extended when it becomes uncomfortable, like I said, irritating, embarrassing. When you're having sex with your God-given partner and you're thinking of somebody else. Spirit of the frog. Let's say this prayer. Let's be on our feet. Every sexual disturbance. So if you're not married and your heart has become a battleground for sex, when you see a lady, you can't think of something else other than putting them in your bed. When you see a man, you can't think of anything else other than that. Then you need to pray. Every sexual disturbance in my life, I stand on the ground of the blood of Jesus. I bind you and I cast you out. Leave now in the name of Jesus. I'm not your candidate. I take exception to your operations in the name of Jesus. Every sexual disturbance. If you are given to pornography, this is yours. Say this prayer. Every sexual disturbance in my life, I bind you. I bind you, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Leave my home, leave my marriage right now in the name of Jesus. Leave my bed, leave my intimacy with my husband in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Number six. In that scripture, I want you to look at this very critically. Somebody say DIY. These spirits make you an expert in DIY. What do I mean? It keeps your helpers busy, distracts your helpers that they do not have time to help you. You know, this month is tagged, my time has come. And then because we have released the word, God has released the word, he sends help us your way. But then what happens is that the enemy, the spirits of the frog, will go to your helpers. The Bible says they will even, um, verse 3, and uh, KJV, thank you. Okay, cool. No, 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 that's NLT. And if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite your borders, blah, blah, blah. And then verse 3. Zion, okay. And the rivers shall bring forth abundantly, frogs abundantly. We shall go up and come into your house, we've dealt with that. Into your bedchamber, we've dealt with that. Your bed, into your house, into the house of your servants. The Bible says kings will serve you. The Bible is consistent. God has assigned some people to be your destiny helpers. Somebody say destiny helpers. No man is an island. You cannot fulfill destiny all by yourself. That's what I mean by DIY expert. When you become a DIY expert, all the money that comes to you, you have to work for them. Nobody gives you anything. All the favors you get, nobody has ever thought of just giving you favor without you asking. DIY expert. That's not how God wants us to live life. God intends to give us helpers, servants. The Bible says Abraham was rich in gold, in silver. He had men servants, maid servants. Job was the richest in the east. He had servants. Isaiah said, kings will come to the brightness of your, sun, of your rising. Arise, shine, your light has come. He said he will send us helpers. Even Jesus had to choose 12 helpers. Because he couldn't do it alone. Somebody say, I receive help. Somebody say, Father, help me. So what happens here is that servants, those that are meant to save you in life, your helpers are disturbed and distracted by these frog spirits so that you become a DIY expert. There was this prayer somebody said a while back. He said, Lord, deliver my destiny helpers from satanic forgetfulness. Some people want to help you, but for some reasons they forget. Demonic forgetfulness. Somebody shout, no more. Help is coming. I receive help in the name of Jesus. So you become DIY expert. You never experience help or destiny helpers. No help from anywhere. Anyone assigned to marry you is distracted as a single person. 
So one thing to the other to the other, keep sending them away. Someone shout, no more. Even when they see you, that, oh, I see this person, they need help, they become suddenly overwhelmed by problems. I have been in situations, I'm not sharing for sharing's sake, no. These are real life stories. I've been in situations where somebody will want to come to my help, not one, not twice. All of a sudden, things from nowhere will just come on them. They will not be able to help anymore. To the extent that there was a, a particular person that was meant to help me, I was there like 99%. Everyone stay indoor. Everyone stay inside. Ayonimi, stay inside. I was there 99%. You know what happened? Hired assassins went to attack him. He was meant to help me do something. I was this close. Hired assassins went to him. Somebody say no more. I will not be a DIY expert. That's the type of people that say, oh, I went to high school. But then when we're going to write NCA level three, the, the office of the NCA caught fire and then they didn't graduate. You know, I'm just giving an example. Something will just happen that the miracle will not happen. Somebody shall no more. Not on my watch. Somebody say, not on my watch. Life is a risk. Life is fierce. Life is war. Yes, we must enjoy life, but then some powers do not want you and I to relax and have good lives. That's why we war in prayer. We war on our knees. Shout hallelujah. So, our prayer is this. Anyone assigned, okay, sorry. Every hindering spirit or distracting spirit assigned against my divine helpers be removed by fire. I bind you, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Every hindering spirit, every distracting spirit assigned against my helpers be removed by fire. I bind you, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Father, from today, I ask for divine helpers, destiny helpers. Let my helpers be many in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. There's another prayer there. It says, Father, in the name of Jesus, let my helpers be many. There was a man in the Bible. He was at the pool for 38 years. Why? He said nobody could help him. You don't need to be in the problem for extended periods of time. Help us. Somebody shout, help us. Yes, you need them. The person that employs you and says, I like you, I'm going to give you the job. It's your destiny helper. He may be your manager, but he's a helper. What if that man was not on the table that day and somebody else that was mean comes on the table? Then you're done. Somebody shall know more. When you send in your application and it lands on the table of somebody that says, oh, I just don't want to think about this type of name. Push it up aside. Destiny help us. Destiny help us. Destiny help us. Father, let my helpers be many. You see, there was a day uh, um, I saw this couple with their baby they were stopped by police, and I saw, I think my son said, the lady is crying and all that. And when that happened, I was so moved. They were stuck, stranded. Their car was broken, wasn't probably good enough for the road. That's why the police stopped them. So I just looked at them, and then I had some coins in my car, like maybe $20 coins or something. And I took the coins. I just remembered again now. And I said, where are you going? And I gave them the coins to take a taxi. You know, there are some people, by looking at them, you know they're struggling. Help us. I'm not saying that to show my flag. No, that's what came to me now. Help us. What if I was not there? Maybe they would have walked home. The car wasn't roadworthy. They took the car, stopped on the road, stranded with a baby. Somebody say, let my helpers be many. Say that prayer in one minute, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let my helpers be many 
in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. The last one is this. It says it will enter into your ovens. Whatever you are feeding from, your food, all of a sudden you start having allergic reactions. Yes, it's possible I also have some allergic reactions sometimes. I'm dairy free. But some are inflicted by evil spirits. Amen. And I feel so much for some of our brothers that are gluten-free, vegan, and all this and all that. And their options for food is so small. What an affliction. And those sort of food are very expensive. God. Somebody say no more. It shall enter into your ovens. Food is affected. Your appetite for spiritual and physical food is, what do I call it? Mutilated or twitched in some way. Negatively affected. Food becomes a problem. Some people say the way to your heart is through your stomach. But when the food is not there, what happens to the heart? So if we pray this prayer, we are indirectly also praying about your income. Amen. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. I have a burden. I don't know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Shakalaba. Let's pray. Kapo sita blas kalabo. Hia galabo si prasabo ze bruza kayaba. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's been carrying a burden for a long time. And the Lord is inviting you to give it up. Give it up. Give, up. give it up to him right now. If you're that person, lift your hand. I'm going to pray for you. All eyes closed. You've been carrying a burden for an extended period of time. An extended period of time. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord will have me pray for you. If you lift your hand, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask, you are the burden bearer. You said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I pray, Father, take this burden away from this brother in the name of Jesus. Let the burdens be gone. I decree fire consume the burden. Let the burden be replaced with divine rest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So if your relationship is there and there are disturbances, you're going to say this. We have two more prayer points after this. Father, in the name of Jesus, remove every negativity that affecting my life, my family, my destiny. God can heal cancer. If it's cancer, mention it. If it's depression, God can take it away. Mention it. If it's financial struggles, God can take it away. Mention it. Father, in the name of Jesus, remove every negativity affecting my life, my family, my destiny. In the name of Jesus, your studies. Mm. Amen. Somebody is having a problem with their education here, with their studies. I don't know. If you are there, please, all eyes closed, lift your hands. All eyes closed, lift your hands. I'll pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for these pleasant people. You said, go in this, your might. I have no power of my own, but by the power that came on Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, your word says the spirit of excellence was found upon them. Right now I decree the spirit of excellence. Come on, this was in the name of Jesus. 
every spirit and garment of falling short and under your divine destiny and standard, I bind them in the name of Jesus. I command them to live right now in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you will know more than your teachers. I have more understanding than my teachers. Father God, let that be their testimonies from today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Second to last prayer point, Father, in the name of Jesus. Turn my mockery to celebration and all my pains to gain in the name of Jesus. The spirit of frog makes you to become a mockery. Turn my mockery to celebration. Oh God, my Father, turn my mockery. Hey, abalabo sakayaba. Habo sikaya brosibo. Shibla la rusika bala. Hey, abo lika irabu sitiaba. All my pain is done to gain, Father. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I have an impression to pray for those having one pain or the other. Lift your hands. They're all eyes closed. We're not here to see anyone. Lift your hands. You have pains and you need Jesus to turn them around supernaturally. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your people. You do not inflict pain, God. It's the work of the enemy. Right now, let the pains be reversed by fire. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, amen. Last prayer point. Hindering spirits assigned against me and my divine destiny. Before you were born, God wrote a book. It's in the book of Psalms. God wrote a book about you. How you will live. And all the seconds and minutes of your life. But the enemy comes to shift us away. Somebody say, no more. Hindering spirits are signed against me. You're going to mention your name. My name is Busola Matis. So you mention your name. Hindering spirits are signed against me. And my divine destiny, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I reverse your operations by fire, by the blood of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, say that prayer in one minute. Hindu spirits assigned against me and my divine calling, my divine destiny. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I reverse your operations by the fire of the Holy Ghost. By fire in the name of Jesus, in my children's lives, in my husband's life, in my ministry, in my marriage. I reverse your operations by fire in Jesus' name. In this church, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Come in, O God. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been having this come to my spirit over and over again, but I'll just quickly share this. This is my life in the secret. A lot of praying and praying and praying. Even when you get your millions and billions, you will not keep them by your power. It is the power of God that keeps people. Lift up your hands. Father, keep me by your power. Thank you, Father. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Let us just stretch our hand to mommy right now. Let us pray that God will continue to fill her in the mighty name of Jesus. That God will use her the more in the name of that our light will continue to shine. Our light will continue to shine. That the wisdom on our life will continue to grow in Jesus' name. That everything she lay her hands on shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. That no weapon or fashion or form against her shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Are we ready for our confessions right now? In three, two, 
One, let's go. Now is my set time and I know it. I am blessed indeed and highly favored. My status has changed and I've won all my battles. Amen. This is my season and my opportunity. There is nothing the devil can do about it. I'm already a winner. Amen. My time has come. I'm a champion. Christ did it all for me in victory. Amen. I'm destined for great things. My time has come. I'm a miracle. My time has come. I'm in time of my visitation. My time has finally come. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's go this week with God's blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week, guys.